What if that nagging feeling in the back of your neck was real? What if those hands reaching out from the dark that you believed were there, were there? What if the monster in the basement really existed? And what if there was really something under the bed? Would you have the courage to face your fears? Hello, brave souls. Today's story is Don't Use the Fifth Floor, written by Stolen Faces Cabal. For the record, I loved my grandfather. Growing up, he was always the one willing to watch me on the weekends or take me out somewhere fun. He was a phenomenal storyteller. He was the one who taught me to drive. He was even the one who bought me my first beer. So that's why I admit I'm an asshole for not wanting to take care of him now. I know it's selfish, and after all he'd done for me growing up, it only seemed fair. I think my resentment came from the fact that no one else in my family was in a situation to take care of him. To myself, a couple of deadbeat uncles and aunts, my own separated parents that I hadn't spoken to in years, the list of potential caretakers gets narrowed down really quick. Financially, I could take care of them, although it meant life would be tight. With that in mind, I made a few moves to try to accommodate, to include transferring jobs and moving to a new town. That's why I bought the house. It made sense at the time. Plenty of space for my grandfather and I, fairly close to my work, and it was a steal for how the market was then. The house was old, built in the 60s. The architecture was wonky, and the floor plan was all over the place, and it just oozed the dumpster fire that was 60s interior decoration. We're talking shag carpets, a weird hodgepodge of vinyl and linoleum flooring, earth love wallpaper, the works. The upstairs was odd. When he reached the top of the staircase, he came to one end of the long hallway. Along the left side were four bedrooms. The first two were in pretty good condition. The last two looked like they had not been used or updated in 50 years. Along the walls, between the doorways, were floor to ceiling bookshelves filled with old books. The dust jackets read titles like Gulliver's Travels, Tom Sawyer, things like that. Not really my preferred genre, but I knew that my grandfather's bread and butter, so I left them in case he wanted to read them. I took the first room as my own. I put my grandfather in the second. He wasn't infirmed, and he didn't have a problem with the stairs. Really, all he needed from me was tracking his pills daily. It was the usual elderly people cocktail, sleeping pills, arthritis, etc. But I figured I should still be the next door in case I needed help. The third room, I planned on turning into an office for myself, but it sort of just became a cluttered storage room for my old junk. The fourth, I left empty. My grandfather liked to write. When I mentioned he was a phenomenal storyteller, that was because he did it for a living. He wrote books, and even though many never got published, that never discouraged him from plugging away late at night at his obnoxious loud typewriter. That's what he did all day, every day, while I was at work. I'd sometimes come up to his room when I got home, and only then would he realize what time it was. Money was tight like I mentioned before, and soon after moving in, I got the bright idea to rent out a room. In fact, I didn't really need that office either, so I actually had two rooms for rent. I grabbed my stuff from the first room and managed to cram it all into the third. I figured I'd have an easier time renting out the nicer first room, which needed less work to be appealing. I got started with renovations soon after moving rooms. That's when I found the warning. The first thing I did in the first room was pull up the old carpet. After only getting the first couple of square feet, I found a message scratched into the wood underneath. The message was a warning. 
and it was written dozens and dozens of times in the flooring. Don't use the fifth floor. What the fuck? Intrinsically, I assumed it was just a prank. Honestly, I wouldn't put it past my younger self to do something similar in the name of some old-fashioned spookiness. Nevertheless, I decided not to tell my grandfather about it. The new carpet was installed. I painted the walls, and the room was done. I moved my grandfather into the fourth room. He volunteered. He didn't need a lot of space, and the second room would be easier to fix up and get a renter in more quickly. Once he was settled into the fourth, I began the same renovations I did with the first. That's when I saw the warnings again. Don't use the fifth room. It was everywhere. That warning scratched frantically all over the flooring of the second room. The phrase overlapped itself over and over, and as I examined the marks, I got the sickening feeling that it had been done with fingernails. There were stains too, dark brown, and all over. Alarmed, I ran into the hall, and like a child, I started at the first room and counted down the hallway. One, two, three, four. Okay, I wasn't crazy, but because I was thoroughly freaked out, I went to the end of the hall, by the fourth room. I could hear my grandfather in there, his typewriter chugging away. Like an idiot, I examined the wall adjacent to the fourth room's door, as if I'd magically find a door I somehow missed before. Of course, there was nothing. Huffing to myself, I again brushed it all away shaming myself for getting scared so easily. I covered the warnings and finished the second room. That night, I was woken up by thumping coming from the wall adjacent to the fourth room, where my grandfather was sleeping. It was rhythmic and loud. I didn't hear his typewriter either, just a loud thump, 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 thump. I got out of bed and went to his door. I called out first. Hey, Grandpa, is everything okay? Silence. C can I come in? Silence again. I hesitated for a second before cracking the door open. But when I looked in, I saw my grandfather lying in bed asleep. His chest was rising and falling, and I could hear his snoring. I waited a moment, watching him, before I decided to go back to sleep. As soon as I laid back down, I heard his typewriter going off. I almost felt like he had timed it. It wasn't slow to start, too. I heard him typing ferociously, loud and chugging. I could hear him almost slamming the carriage into place over and over. I was afraid he was having some sort of insomnia-induced episode. I ran out of bed and started knocking frantically at his door. Still no response. So I tried to open the door. It was locked. Hey, Grandpa, let me in. Come on, what's going on in there? Still met with only the abusive sounds of his typewriter, I tried the door again and again. Fuck. I wasn't a nurse. I didn't know how to deal with this shit. Grandpa was exceptionally healthy for someone his age. This didn't make sense. The keys to the room were somewhere downstairs. I ran down almost also figuring I could grab his meds and find something that could help. I started fumbling around in kitchen drawers. That's when I heard a door slam and running feet. I jumped and turned, but then heard another door slam upstairs, followed by silence. This time, I didn't call out. Instead, I decided to creep up the stairs slowly. When I got to the top, I was met only by the hall, pitch black, and all the bedroom doors closed. Several of the books had fallen off the shelves and were scattered across the floor. One was laying at my feet. For some reason, I decided to pick it up and open it. The dust jacket had fallen off, but when I opened it, I realized it wasn't a book. The pages had no printed text, but were filled with a warning written over and over from top to bottom of every page. Don't use the fifth floor. Don't use the fifth floor. Don't use the fifth floor. 
No fucking way. With a growing sense of dread, I grabbed another off the shelf, then another, and another. All were the same. Each one was in different handwriting, but all had the same message. Don't use the fifth floor. 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 I placed the book back on the shelf, and with a sudden, unexplainable weight of my, on my ankles, I made my way down the hall. I tried each door, one after another. One, two, three, four. Each one was locked, until I got to the fourth. The door opened without force, and I stepped into the room. It was how it always looked, but my grandfather's typewriter looked to have been beaten to death. Sheets and sheets of paper were piled high next to it, and one was still in the paper rest. A request this time, repeated across the page, let me out. It was written over and over on hundreds of pages piled on his desk. I wondered how long it had taken him to do this. All those nights of hearing him typing, a rock hit the pit of my stomach as a realization came over me. I grabbed the shag carpet at the end of the floor and pulled. The old stitchings tore from the tacked strips with ease, and underneath, I saw the same request. Crisscrossing, repeated over and over, scratching into the floor with feverish claw marks. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. Fuck this, I thought. I had to find my grandfather. I stepped out in the hall and tried all the doors again. All were still locked. After getting to the first and finding it still locked, I pounded my fist on the door. Damn it, Grandpa, let me in. There's some crazy shit going on. I've got to get out of here. A book on the shelf to my left fell and landed on the floor with the pages open. Don't use the fifth floor. 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 I looked at the shelf and saw the books packed into it. So many warnings. I grabbed another book and pulled it down, then another and another, letting them fall to the ground, their cryptic warning yelling at me to do something I hadn't done. I know I didn't use the fifth room, but that's when I saw it. After pulling more and more books off the shelf, I could finally see behind the shelf to the wall behind it, only it wasn't a wall. It was a door, a door to the actual first room. Fuck, fuck, I turned and counted again like a child, never wanting to be incorrect so badly as I did then. Five rooms. I counted them another three times. The panic set in. The rock in my stomach turned into a knot coiling around itself over and over. I pulled the shelf away from the wall until I made a gap wide enough for the door to open. The doorknob turned. It wasn't locked and revealed a room covered in dust. It looked barely used. I heard another door slam. I turned and I looked down the hall, barely able to make out my grandfather in the dark, standing there staring. Grandpa? Hey, where are you? Are you okay? Silence. Come on, some crazy shit's going on. I don't know what, but we need to get out of here now. He stepped towards me. I still couldn't make him out clearly, but his hands glistened in the dark, and they were dripping on the floor, making dark stains in the wood. Grandpa, what? He ran straight at me. I barely had time to think before I felt an impossibly strong vice-like grip wrap around my neck and shut the air off my lungs completely. Between the dark, the panic, and the lack of air, I could barely see anything, and I swear that must have been the reason why his face looked the way it did. His gestures were there, but strained like he was fighting with every muscle in his body. Then there were his eyes. They were gone. Not like they had been torn out, or were bloody wounds. Where his eyes were, they were now black holes, surrounded by scratches. It looked as though something had clawed and scratched its way into his eyes, but with no blood and no torn flesh, leaving just dark caverns behind. That was all I saw before I left myself, lifted into the air, and carried down the hall. My breath was cut off absolutely, and I couldn't see anymore but I knew where he was taking me. I kicked and punched, but had no effect. And in the dark, it felt like they were eight, he was eight feet tall. I felt a stop in front of the fifth room, 
Still clinging to consciousness, I could hear him open the door with his other hand and walk in. In the dark, he just stood there, and I must have passed out for a moment, because in the pitch darkness, indistinguishable from unconsciousness, I heard voices, so many voices, whispering the same thing, almost as if they were speaking directly into my ears. Let me out. 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 Consciousness rushed back into my head, and then the rush hurt so bad I had to squint. I looked up, realizing my grandfather had loosened his grip. His non-eyes were squeezed shut in pain, and he was shaking his head back and forth, as if trying to throw something off. Finally, he stopped and opened his eyes. They were there again, but his face was still strained in pain. He looked at me, then, without shut warning, shoved me out of the door into the hall. Lock the door. That was the last thing he said before he slammed the door shut. I heard a titanic crash, as if some massive object slammed into the door on the other side. I fumbled for the key of my pocket, hands shaking, as I locked the door as quickly as I could. I heard more slamming, and I swear I heard multiple voices on the other side all screaming to be let out. As I backed away from the door, the voices and the slamming stopped, and were replaced with one sound. Thump. 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 I spent the next three days in a motel room on the other side of town. I didn't leave once, hating myself for not trying to get my grandfather out and leaving him behind, simultaneously hating myself further for not going back for him. I couldn't even bring myself to call the cops. What would I say? Nothing made sense or was believable. I'd sound like a crackhead more or anything else. On the third day, I finally went back. The house was unchanged, exactly how I left it. When I went inside, I stood at the door for a minute, somehow thinking I could hear another door slam or running feet, but no, just silence. I went upstairs and everything was right where he had been left that night. The doors were all open and the first three rooms were exactly how I had left them, all the same, except for the books. They had all been meticulously placed back on the shelves and the real first room had been covered back up. And then the fifth room, the fifth room was empty. All my grandfather's belongings were gone. The carpet I had pulled up was put back in place. His typewriter, the papers, everything. There was even a layer of dust on the floor. I decided not to walk through the door. I shut it and left the house. Grandpa, if somehow you're alive and reading this, I'm so sorry for what happened. I've thought about this for a while now, and I know what I have to do. I stopped by the gas station on the way here, and I'm currently standing outside the house with 12 gallons worth of gas cans on my truck. I hope this will permanently fix whatever it is wrong with this house. But as I stand here now, I somehow get the feeling I'm not the first person to have stood here, thinking they can burn this house down in the fifth room for good. If I leave after this, and somehow someone else comes across this house like nothing happened, I just have one piece of advice. Don't use the fifth room. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Big thank you to the author for creating such an interesting and genuinely creepy experience. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe or follow for more videos just like this one. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon link in the description below and know that I genuinely appreciate it. Follow me over on Twitter at podcast underscore fear or Facebook at fear the podcast. Thank you again for listening to the story. And until next time, always remember to face your fears. <laughs>